Well, as you saw uh, in that report, Plaid Cymru and the Green Party decided not to stand candidates to maximise the Lib Dems' chance of success. So let's introduce our, our next guest, uh, James uh, Kanagasorium, to try and work out what impact uh, that could have uh, when it comes to future elections. Thank you very much for uh, being with us uh, today. Firstly, what do you think is going to happen in Bracken and Radnorshire? I think uh, the expectations have to be uh, a, a Liberal Democrat win and a clear Liberal Democrat win. Uh, there's a number of things why that should be the case. First of all, it's the circumstances under which this by-election is being held. Um, but I think more fundamentally, this is a very Liberal type seat. Uh, this is a seat that the Liberal Democrats hold at the Assembly level um, by 27 points. This is a seat that has been Liberal Democrat many times over. Um, and it's also a seat in which, in the European elections, um, the Remain party's got 46% of the vote. And this morning, a poll came out showing a seat poll in Brecon that shows that the Liberal Democrats are, are quite far ahead. It's interesting, isn't it? Because we've, um, we've heard mutterings of Remain alliances before. It hasn't really got off the ground. No. Why do you think they've struggled to make it work so far? I think principally the reason is, um, if we think about two pools of voters, Leave voters and Remain voters, there are many more parties competing for uh, the Remain votes. And party identification amongst Remain voters is still quite strong. Um, and compromise has been quite hard for that reason. And they hold all sorts of uh, views on constitutional issues, on economics, on the environment. And, and I think because of that, compromise has been difficult. I think also at the organisational level, there has been an unwillingness to compromise. So who shares the activists? Who stands where? These are all really pressing questions that you could perhaps solve on a single by-election, but it's really difficult to scale. Mm. And I guess it's easy in places like Brecon, where there's a clear front run of the Lib Dems. <laughs> if it's a little bit more nuanced, then you might find people less willing to stand down. Yeah, that, I mean, that's exactly right. In North Wales, for example, there's a seat called Innismon, where the Liberal Democrats, uh, the Greens and Plaid could all credibly um, put through a candidate and win, and it's currently Labour held. Um, the conversations around those types of seats are going to be much, much more difficult. And those are the ones that could make a difference. Let's have a look, uh, shall we, at how many seats a Remain alliance uh, could win. Uh, this is some analysis that you've uh, done for uh, Safety Ridge on Sunday about the potential for Remain parties if they work together. So currently, uh, 27 seats uh, in uh, England and Wales are held by explicitly pro-Remain candidates. Mm -hmm. And you think that could potentially increase to 66? I think that's right. So that, that, that figure can change a lot. And principally to come up with this kind of analysis, I think what I've done is look at, three, look at this problem through three lenses. So the first is to look at all the uh, 573 seats in England and Wales and say, which are Remain leaning as of today? So broadly, if you look at the seats where the Remain vote would be 60% or above, the second kind of condition we've looked at is how far ahead are the Conservatives and Labour at the last general election? It's very hard to break through for example, if they have a vote share that's, say, 60%. Mm -hmm. Very, very hard to get that. And I think the third condition is to actually look at what's happened recently in elections. And in the European elections, the Remain parties averaged around 36%. So broadly, I would look to see where the alliance is scoring 40% or more. And 66 seats, I mean, that could really be... They could be kingmakers in a hung parliament yeah. easily. And you think it could even go higher? It could go higher. I mean, uh, it's worth noting, though, that 66 seats is, is basically a supercharged Liberal Democrat Party of 2010. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not that radical departure mm -hmm. from what we've had before. So what would happen for them to get 103 seats? So to get 103 seats, what we do is toggle those conditions. So instead of it perhaps being 60% or more remain, we would take that down to kind of 57.5%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, we would look at Conservative and Labour seats that instead of being 60% mm -hmm. score, they would be 65. And for Remain parties, we would put that down to... And at the, highest, at the highest point of your estimates, you think that the Remain, Remain parties could go all the way up to 154 seats? Well, not necessarily win 154 mm -hmm. seats, but the kind of, that's the window or the parameters that they would be looking at. I mean, the thing is, uh, Sophie, with, with four parties on around 25%, it's incredibly hard to work out what the window should be, what the parameters should be. And they all have to work together, which, as we know, in politics is not easy. Um, I'm interested as well on some of your research on how this would impact both the Labour and the Conservative Party. Mm. So this graph, uh, just explain to us what's happening here. 
Absolutely. So on the vertical axis, what we have is the degree to which a, each dot is a seat uh -huh. in England and Wales. And on the vertical axis, we have the degree to which that seat, uh, the Remain parties in 2019 in the European elections, over or underperformed, given how systemically Remain the seat is. And then on the horizontal axis, we have the Labour Party vote share of 2017. Now, this graph, it, it looks technical, but actually the, the message is really clear, which is that as the Labour Party does better, the Remain Party underperforms. And as it does worse, the Remain Party overperforms. Mm -hmm. What that means principally is that the Labour Party and the Remain cause, as it were, are, are, we can now statistically prove are fishing from the same pools of voters. So that's a problem for Labour? That's a real problem for Labour on a, on, on a voting basis. And let's have a look at the Conservative Party. Uh, what is happening here? Well, there's two, two things of note here. This is the same analysis done for the Conservative uh, vote share for each seat. First of all, the trend is much more loose. So there's no sense that the Conservatives and the, uh, the kind of Remain cause are immediately fishing from the same uh, groups of voters. And second of all, the relationship is positive. So actually, then that, that proves that it's not necessarily the case. So just to sum up, who is more at risk from a Royal Marine Alliance? Is it Labour or is it the Conservative Party? Well, yeah, maybe you won't like this answer, but I think actually both, both of the main parties, if, if, if we can call them that. Um, on a seat basis, I would say actually the Conservatives have a lot to be worried about. Which matters for Which matters, because that's the election. So the 66 number, 66 Remain Alliance seats that they could target, you know, two thirds of those were Conservative in 2015. I think and these are, you know, in the southeast. It's kind of this is Cameron country. Yeah, Cameron country. Yeah, this is kind of more metropolitan, more urban, more professionals. Many seats that he, he won over for mm -hmm. the first time in 2010. I think, though, the really interesting story here is on a voting basis, on the number of voters. I think it's the Labour Party that's going to have a problem. So, I don't think the Remain Alliance, if it happens, is going to necessarily take as many seats from the Labour Party, but it could collapse its vote in Middle England, handing seats to the Conservative Party and the Brexit Party. Interesting stuff. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your research and for coming on the programme to explain it. Thank you very much.